Amen. Why don't we just love the Lord right now across this place? Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for the presence of God we can already feel in the sanctuary today? God, we give you glory and honor right now, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we magnify you. We lift you up and we adore you right now, God. There's nobody like you. There's nobody close to you. Hallelujah. You're the one true living God, and we love you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we worship you.
such a sweet presence of the Lord is in this place tonight. Is there anybody here tonight that left the declaration there? They're here to say, God, I'm making it all about you. I want to come back to a heart of worship. It's so easy, and I, I'm first, I'll throw myself under the bus. It's easy for me, and I'm sure it's easy for many of us to make it all about ourselves. We can get caught up in everyday life. We can get caught up in the everyday things. We get caught up in, in what's going on the bigger picture. I'm guilty of it. I can get I can get in a mindset where day after day I can look at what's going on around me and I want to focus on everything that's going all wrong in my life. And I never stop to say, God, you know what? I, I, I'm going to cut out some time right now and spend just a little bit more time in worship. And I'm going to get back into a heart right now that is solely focused on you. But no, I want to look at everything else going on around me. Jesus, Lord, help each and every one of us tonight to get back into a heart of worship where every single day we can find, we can make that time to say, God, I'm going to focus on you. Hallelujah. We want to take, we want to go uh, before the Lord tonight and take all these needs. We have Sister Marlene. Uh, she goes Tuesday for more testing on her cancer. Uh, Sister Susie Stout is weak and needing a healing for her body. Um, Sister Shorty Roach feeling sick again. Marcus Gibson in the ICU with a blood clot on his heart and he's retaining fluid. Um, Sister Jessica Bethune having contractions and they're too early. Uh, Brother Rushing's family is feeling sick. And baby Jack, his lungs haven't fully developed. Um, and Brother and Sister uh, McCollum been sick off and on for three weeks. And Sister Diana West has a bad heart problem and has been told that she is going to die. And right now we want to lift up each and every one of these needs unto the throne of grace and mercy here tonight and across this house with an uplifting of hands. Right now, Jesus, Lord God, we come before you. Jesus, we lift each and every one of these needs up to you tonight. God, we release them into your hands. God, Lord, you see this petition of names. God, you see each and every one of these sicknesses, each and every one of these illnesses. You see baby Jack. You see brother Marcus Gibson. You see Shorty and Sister Stout and Marlene and brother and sister McCollum and the... And Sister Diana West, God, Lord, you see each and every one of these needs, and God, we lift them up to you right now. God, we speak your name, the name that is above every name, over each and every one of these needs. God, we know that you are quick, God, that you are able. God, Lord, you are able to step in and, God, have your way. And Jesus, Lord, we ask, God, that you come down, that you step in and bring healing. And God, have your way over each and every one of these names. And God, we give you all of the praise. We give you all of the glory. We give you all of the honor, God, because you alone are worthy. You alone, God, are able to step in and do what we cannot. And God, we are trusting and believing you, God. And we worship you and we praise you, Lord, for what you are going to do in each and every one of these situations. God, we worship you. Hallelujah. If there is anyone tonight that is needing any prayer, or anything needs a, needs a touch from the Lord, we ask that you come down and let the ministry join around you and lay hands upon you. Continue to worship with us.
Amen. Let's clap unto the Lord, believing that he heard our prayer tonight. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the promises of God? Hallelujah. Amen. We got two brand new ones for you tonight, so just worship with us tonight. Amen. Praise God. Promises. We're standing on his promises. In him we have a confidence. He won't fail.
most familiar scriptures, amen, that we learned to quote when we were young, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. And then in Romans he said, and he commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, he didn't wait for us to get it together. He didn't wait for us to straighten up. He didn't wait for us to put pieces together and to straighten our attitudes and, and pull things together. He said, while we were yet sinners. Woo, aren't you glad he loves you? Amen. I, I understand his love for me. I understand that he loves me. Calvary, when you begin to question whether or not God loves you, all you have to do is look back to a hill called Calvary where he stretched his arms and he proved that he loved you. Amen. But you know, this relationship that he, he and I have, it's two-way because I love him back. And I want him to know that I love him. You got to understand, he extended grace and mercy to me. Hallelujah. Then that while I was a sinner. Amen. Anybody love him tonight? Come on. Does anybody love him tonight? Hallelujah. I'm talking about anybody in love with him tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about being in love with him. Praise God. Amen. There, there's people I love, but there's one sitting on this piano, playing the piano that I'm in love with. Hallelujah. When I'm, when I'm around her, man, I still get them butterflies. <laughs> 23 years. Because we have a relationship. And I don't know about you, but when I get in his presence, man, I still get them butterflies. And I begin to feel something. Hallelujah. And I begin to feel his love. And I begin to pour my love out. And all of a sudden, there's a, there's a connection there. Because it's a relationship. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for him. Aren't you thankful for him? Worship tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus.
from the evening through the morning, I will praise you. When I rise, when I fall, I will praise you through it all. I will sing a love song to my
for the love that you extend beyond my faults and failures. Thank you, God, for mercy you make new every morning. Thank you, God, for loving and caring about us. Thank you, God. We love you today. We love you today. We love you today. Amen. Now I wonder if we can just give him a hand clap of praise tonight. Praise God. Amen. He is worthy to be worshiped and praised might be seated. I want to give a praise report, pray for Sister Jessica uh, Bethune this morning. She had went to the hospital having contractions and they were worried and they got there to run some tests and Brother Jamie texted me this afternoon, everything tested out good, she's fine and we give God praise for that, amen. <laughs> and so what happens when the church begins to pray. Such an honor to have each and every one of you here today. It's good to have Carlton here with Jeff and May May. It's good to have Tanya Tucker and and Mark Tillman with us. Good to have David and Savannah with us. Uh, Brother Danny, Sister Trina, Brother Josh, Sister Britton. Let's give all of our guests a hand. Amen. We are honored that you would be here. Sister Taylor's going to make her way up to the platform to sing. We're blessed to have them have her to sing with for us tonight. And I just want to, I just feel an umpteen in the Holy Ghost that we would all just pray repentance. I don't know what you come in here battling. I don't know what you come in here dabbling with. I don't know. But God has extended his hand of mercy and grace to us all. And so just co collectively as a body of believers, could we all just bow our heads and pray, God, would you forgive me right now? I want it to be honest. I want you to be open. And I want you to be pure. For us to break through some things tonight, our minds must be clear. Lord, we come before you tonight asking for forgiveness. I pray, O oh Lord, that your grace and mercy would be extended our way today. Search my heart, God. Search my soul, God. I need you, God. I need you to walk through. I need your forgiveness. I need your grace. I need your mercy. I need you, Lord. I can't make it without you, Jesus. Repentance has got to be more than a lip service. It's got to be some change made. 
if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, there needs to be some changes made. And let God forgive you. But God will forgive you. Amen. Let's worship with Sister Taylor tonight as she sings. I'm flowing from the cross. Pour over me. Pour over me. Oh, let this be where I die. My Lord with thee. Crucified. Testing. There we go. A talented bunch of talented singers around DPC. Amen. Amen. We also got a great group of ministers here at DPC, and none none beats Brother Stanfield. Brother Stanfield, we want him to make his way up this way. Could you lift your hands this way and ask God to use Brother Stanfield to preach His Word? God, we pray Your anointing to be upon Brother Stanfield tonight. Use him in a mighty way, God. We give You praise. We give You glory. Thank you, Church. Let's give God a hand clap of praise, folks. I'll tell you now, if the ministry around here don't beat me, we, we ain't got much of a ministry. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I, I appreciate the ministry of this church. And, I, and, and 
I'm telling you, they're, they're a blessing. I, I have been uh, in several churches in my 48 years of ministry, but I've never seen a greater group of ministry. Now, we had at Jash Creek at one time, there was, I think, 29 preachers in that church at that time, and there were some good ones, I'm telling you, some good ones. But brothers, they can't top y'all. I'm telling you, y'all y'all are good. Even the young ministers here are great, are great. I'm telling you, it's good to see Tanya out again tonight. I've known this young lady for many years. She's been a dear friend of mine for many years, and I'm so glad to see her coming out and being with us. And all you other folks, all you other good folks, God, God bless you. You know, I thought in that hour and time that we're living in, there's so much confusion about how to serve God and and uh, and how to to get in church and things like that. And there's so many beliefs out there that uh, have got people absolutely confused. And they look at us and they think that we're far-fetched. You know, we're out on the, uh, the left side, you know, just completely out of things. But let me tell you, there ain't but one plan of salvation in the Bible. There is not but one plan of salvation, plan of salvation in the Bible. And... Nothing else will work. There's one, one uh, group will tell you that all you got to do is believe on God and be saved. Well, look, Jesus told him, said, if you believe on me as the scriptures have said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. He said this, he spake of the spirit which had not been given. At that time, it had not been given. All right? A lot of people confused about the Godhead. There's only one God. There's only one God. The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary, okay? That made him the father, okay? He was the father. No contention about that. He was the father. And Jesus told us that I and my father are one. He said, told his disciples, said, have I been with you all this time and you don't know if you have seen me, you have seen the father. So that brings it all down, Brother Brent, to one God. There's only one. And you couldn't serve three. You can't serve one. You can't serve three for sure. That is the truth. I'll tell you what, with the battles that I've had in the, in the last 48 years, I wouldn't want to try to serve three of them. <laughs> three times a battle, I couldn't stand it. But I appreciate God. He's so good to us. I'll tell you, he's, he's brought us through so much, and he's blessed us in such such rich ways. I mean, we're not blessed with money, but money don't mean anything to me, folks. Money means a lot to some people. It's their God. Money don't mean a thing to me. I can I can honestly stand here before you. Uh, Richie's former dad-in-law told uh, told Richie or somebody said, them folks, I think he told his daughter, said, them folks won't ever amount to anything because they don't care nothing about money. Well, I don't care nothing about money. I want what God's got. Whatever he's got for me, I, I don't have no treasures. I, I don't have any treasures. I, I, Brother Brent, I check myself constantly and, and check and see if I'm putting up too much confidence in something down here or putting too much treasure. I have no treasures. My family is my treasures here. That's the only treasures I've got in the church people. But I have, there's nothing that I own that I would not want to leave when I leave this walk of life. I don't want nothing holding my feet on this ground, I'll tell you what, when God comes back and gets a hold of me, I want to leave here worshiping God and praising God every step of the way. God has been so good to me, folks, and I love him. I love him dearly. Well, let's go to Psalms 51 and 10. I'm, now, I've had this message for a couple of months, and then the other pastor is teaching on, on uh, holiness and I may get some of his some of his stuff tonight, <laughs> but I'm only going to deal with one one thing mostly. So Psalms 51 and 10 said, uh, "Let me get to it here. 51 and 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me." You can be seated. I'm going to deal with a with a right spirit tonight. With the right spirit. And I thought, you know, in the hour that we're living in, the day and time that we're living in, it's so important for the people of God to have a right spirit. The world, the world is in a turmoil, folks. And you can't get caught up in it. Now, you, let me tell you, 
If we listen to the news and we listen to all of our neighbors and things and all the bad things that's going on in this, in this country, I want you to know we'll get caught up right with the world and we'll forget that God has control of everything. Let me tell you, there ain't nothing going to happen that God don't take care of. He's going to have his way in everything. But the world is, the world is afraid. They're, they're, they're frightened. They're scared. But not only that, they're angry. You talk to people, I want you to know they're angry. They see the things that's happening, and, the, and it's out of their control. They can't do anything about it, and seemingly nobody else is doing anything about it. But that's because, that's because they don't want to do anything about it. They're doing they're just exactly what they want to do, and it's not what you and I realize that they should be doing. And the world knows that too, and they get angry. They get angry, and, and we cannot let ourselves be like that. Folks, we've got to be a light to the world. They, ha they don't have any peace. They don't have any comfort. They don't have any hope. We have all of that, and we have got to show them that there's a reality in serving God. We've got to make sure that our spirit is right when we go before the world. We've got to make sure that they can see the Holy Ghost through us because they're not going to see it any other way. We're the only Bible that a lot of people are going to read. And if we can, bless his heart. <laughs> He's a good one, I'll tell you. If, if we can show the world that there is a reality. You know, they, they hear all this uh, doctrine, just every kind of doctrine uh, that you can imagine. And I mean, if it's something that you want to hear, it's out there. It's out there. You can hear it. And I've seen Pentecostal folks get off into, into things that, they should have known better to get off into stuff like that. But if you get to dabbling around with the world, you get to dabbling around in things and reading things you shouldn't be reading, and first thing you know, you're going to get messed up in your mind, and that's going to be reflected in your spirit, and your spirit's not going to be right. And I'm telling you what, God, that devil will lead you off into something totally away from the truth. We've got to stay with God and stay with our truth that we know. In the hour that we're living in, people are walking away from the standards of God. I, Brother Mayo and I were talking about that just before service. That just, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see how far people have backed up from the time that we got into this church and the standards and everything that they taught us then. And they were right. They were holiness. They was right. And people are, little by little, they moved that line back. And they've moved that line back. It's got to stop somewhere, folks. It's got to stop somewhere. We're going to have to take a stand and say, this is it. It's not going no further. We're going to be Pentecostal or not going to be nothing. We're going to be a child of God or we're not going to be anything. I'll tell you, I love serving God. And I'm so thankful for everything that's been taught to me. I'm so thankful for the men of God that's been in my life that have taught me the things that, and I'm thankful for what God has taught me. There's been times, Brother Billy, when, when God put me through things and I didn't understand what, was, what I was going through, but when I got finished with it, God showed me what he had taught me. And I, I'm so thankful for everything that he's taught me and the life that God has let me live. I wouldn't change it for nothing in the world. I just wish I could live it a lot harder than what I'm living it. And if there's any way that, that I could figure out to do it, I'd do it because I love him. But I, I'm going to talk tonight about anger. Anger. It's the work of the flesh, folks. Anger. If, you, if you'll read about the works of the flesh, anger is one of them. And at the very last of that scripture that says, those that do those things shall not inherit the kingdom of God will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Anger is a common, you, you can hear it, every, everybody say, well, my daddy was, you know, he had a temper. You know, I guess I got it. No, you didn't get it from your daddy. You got it from the devil, you hear me? You got it from the devil. You need to give it back to him. You know, I pray, Lord, I want a right spirit. I want a clean heart constantly. That has been my prayer for the last 30, 40 years. God, I want a right spirit and I want a clean heart. And, and I want you to know when you pray that, you get buckled down because God's going to work on you. And I thought I'd, I was on that Keebler out, and I'd, I'd been praying that, you know, and God had really been working with me and really been helping me. And uh, they, was, they transferred me over to 
Savannah to, to run stops over there. And my boss laughed at me and he said, I'd just like to see you when Lord, first time Lawrence and you tie up together. So he had me all, that's the store manager, he had me all pepped up, you know, that, that uh, I was going to have trouble with that store owner. Well, I was ready for it, I reckon. And sure enough, it come. It did. We had just a few words. Of course, didn't get didn't get angry or nothing like that, you know. But we had a few words, and uh, he got a little bit angry. You, you know, it put me in my place. So I went out to the truck and I said, "Lord, you're going to have to work on that man's spirit." He said, "I'm going to have to work on yours first if you don't straighten up." And that was just, but some of that's just about as straight as you can get it. He said, "You work on your own, or I'm going to have to work on you myself." But I, I went back in there, and I had a different attitude when I talked to that manager the next time because I knew God had a hold of me, and he was, he was working on me, and I'm so thankful that he was. But so many people take uh, this scripture here. Ephesians 4 and 26 says, Be angry and sin not. Let not the wrath, sun go down your wrath. Yeah, right. But, folks, that is no justification for anger. A lot of people justify their anger through that and their temper through that. That is no justification. You Put that scripture back up if you can. I want you to read that scripture word by word. Can you put it back up there? All right. That's not it. Ephesians 4 and 26. 4 and 26. He said, be ye angry. She, she can't get it. Be ye angry and sin not. Be ye angry and sin not. Folks, you get angry and you open your mouth and you have done sin. Right then. If you can keep your mouth shut, if you can get angry and keep your mouth shut, you might not sin. But if you open your mouth, you've done the sin right on the spot. A lot of marriages, a lot of marriages have actually been torn apart because of nothing but anger. People not trying to control their spirit. People not trying at all to, to do right. You know, the Bible tells us in, in uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, said, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of a fool. Anger resteth in the bosom of a fool. Now, I know some of y'all really battle anger. And I could probably point out a few of you that have a battle with anger. But now I'm going to tell you tonight, don't justify yourself with your anger. Don't try to justify yourself with your anger. You, it'll, it'll split, you'll split heaven, hell wide open, folks, if you if you start justifying anger. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't have the works of the flesh and make it to heaven. We've got to overcome this flesh. We've got to crucify this flesh. We've got to bring it down, I want you to know, so that we don't yield to these things. My daddy-in-law had a temper man. He had a temper. I'm talking about a super bad temper, super bad. And his son, the oldest son, man, he had a temper. I'm telling you what, he had a, he was angry. I've never seen anybody so full of anger and so full of, of hatred as that man was. But I want you to know when God got a hold of him and filled him with the Holy Ghost, I'm t that wife prayed for him for 39 years. She never gave up. And that mama-in-law prayed for 39 years, never gave up on him. And I want you to know God told Bessie to go tell him, said it. Don't tell them to stop, not to stop praying, fixing to fill him with the Holy Ghost. Three weeks later, God filled that man with the Holy Ghost, and you talk about a sweet person. You've never met, you've never met anybody that made such a total turnaround, such a hatred that he had, and such an evil spirit that he had, and then had such a wonderful, wonderful spirit. That's what God will do for you, folks. You get your spirit right. You get your spirit right. God will take care of you. God will let your light shine. We've got to let our light shine to the world. They don't have, they don't have this, and they've got to see something. They don't have no hope. 
Folks, we do. Don't get caught up in this thing with the world. When the world paints, when, the, when they start painting an ugly picture about everything that's going on, don't get worried. Don't get angry. We got hope. We've got God. God's going to take care of us. I want you to know in the land of Goshen, there was not a, there was not a, a frog in the land of Goshen. There was, not, there was nothing there. Those plagues, I want you to know, they did not go into the land of Goshen. The land of Goshen is where children of God was at. God will take care of us, folks. We've got that confidence. But we've got to keep a right spirit. We've got to have a right spirit. Proverbs 16 and 32, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than a man that taketh a city. Now you stop and think about that. If you can control your spirit, you're better off than a man that can take a city by himself. That's saying a whole lot. That's saying a whole lot. Brother Rube Wade, one, one time he, he got up behind the pulpit and, man, he was a man of God, I'm telling you. He was a man of God. And he said, you're not going to make me angry and you're not going to hurt my feelings, so just don't try it. I don't know if he meant, <laughs> if you try it, you might cross him. I don't know what he, what he meant, but... He was a real man of God, though. Hey, I don't think he, I don't think he could have hurt his feelings. But God's so good to us, folks. And, and I'm not trying to hurt anybody. When I tell you this, I'm not trying to hurt nobody. I, my prayer is, God, let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. I want to help somebody make it. I thought, I, was, I prayed that one time, and, and I said, God, I want, there's somebody out there that needs help, and I want, to, I want to be able to reach out to them and help them. And a couple of days later, Brother Dwayne Dunkel reached out to me. Of course, he, he was in bad shape, and he needed help, so I began to help him. Got him in pretty good shape until he got COVID and died. And then I said, Lord, I need somebody to help because I want to help somebody, brother. That life, life has no meaning if you're not reaching out and trying to help somebody. Well, my neighbor across the road, his vehicle tore down, and his sister's in charge of his money, and she won't get him a vehicle. He's by himself. He couldn't go to, they were going to the Second Baptist Church in Lexington, so they couldn't go there. So I told him, I said, we'll go up here to the Cedar Road Pentecostal Church. I said, that's close, and, and uh, I'll drop you off there if you want me to drop you off sometime. And so he did, and I want you to know he got in and got the Holy Ghost. Got in and got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I want God to let me help somebody. I mean, God has blessed me. I, I do not have a need. I do not have a want. He has met every one of my needs. There's not a thing in this world that I want. There's nothing. I don't desire a bigger house. I don't desire a finer house. I don't desire a new car. Those things don't mean nothing to me, folks. I want God, and I want more of him. And, folks, I wouldn't hurt you for nothing in the world, for nothing in the world. But your prayer needs to be, I want a right spirit, and I want a clean heart. And if you've got anger in your life, you need to get it out, folks. God gave me this message for a reason. I mean, he, I, I'm not trying to tear nobody down, but I'm trying to preach what God gives me. And God is wanting you to, to correct some, some uh, spirits. There's some people here that needs to take hold of their spirit. There's some people here that needs to get a hold of their anger because God has done taking notice of it. And when God takes notice of something, you better do some changing, I'm telling you. Because if he, if he gives it to the man of God and he stands up and preaches it, it's on your shoulder then. It's on your shoulder and God will get you. Don't you think he won't? If he's got your number and he's revealed it to the man of God, you better straighten up. It's time then to dig some taters. It's time then to get by. And, and you're going to only want to do it with prayer and fasting. You're not going to do it on your own. It's going to take prayer and fasting. It's going to take a lot of it. You've got to bring that flesh down. You've got to get to crucify that flesh and get it down. A lot of people don't like fasting. The flesh don't like nothing to do with God. I mean, he don't like to pray either. But we know we've got to pray. And you've got to fast too. They go hand in hand, folks. They go hand in hand. If you're here and you've got a temper and you want God to take care of it for you, you want God's help. I want you to come forth tonight. Don't y'all all rush up here now. I'm telling y'all as sincerely as I can say it, 
God's got your number. You need help. God's got your number. He's talking to you. You need to make a move. If you don't do it tonight here, you need to do it night at home. But you need to do something about your anger. God bless you. Let's all stand. Sister Angie, would you come uh, to the piano? We're going to have an altar call. We're not going to dismiss. We're going to give a chance for, to pray this into our spirits. You may have been too embarrassed to come up here saying, I've got, in front of everybody, I've got an anger problem. I need God to work on me. But we're going to ask the church to come up so you can just be camouflaged. You can come up with everybody else because we all struggle with that. If you're looking for a reason to get angry, you'll find one. They're on every corner. You'll find multiple reasons to get angry. But all I need is one reason to give it all the way and let my spirit be right, and that's Jesus. If you would, just make our way up. Let's spend a little time in prayer, and let's ask God to help us all. Whether you struggle with it on a daily basis or it just comes up every now and then, God, let my spirit be right. Come on, let's find a place to pray tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus.
great word of the staff. Let's give him the Lord a hand for preaching and obeying the Holy Ghost tonight. The world would be a lot better shape if it had a few more Brother Stanfuls running around in it. I love this man and thank you for obeying the Holy Ghost. Remember, consecrates this Friday, Brother Dylan Morgan will be ministering. We need you here to support our young people, support your church. Also, this Saturday, benefit for uh, Brother Tony Rawson. If you can help in any way, it starts at 5 o'clock. Uh, make sure we go up and show up for that. Uh, we're having our annual Decatur County school walks, prayer walks that we uh, walk through the hallways of our schools in Decatur County the next or here in a few weeks, August the 21st and August the 28th. It'll be on a Sunday. Uh, the first week we'll be praying at RHS, Riverside High School, and Decatur County Middle School at 3 o'clock and at 4 o'clock. And then on August the 28th, we'll be praying at Parsons Elementary School and Decatur Elementary School at 3. And then University uh, at Martin, University of Tennessee at Martin at 4 o'clock. So let's bind together and let's walk through our schools and pray over our schools, why don't we? And then also on September the 10th, we're taking a church trip to Lambert's Cafe at Sykes, the Missouri, we'll be leaving here at 8 o'clock. It's open to whoever wants to come, be a part. And then over in October, we're going to have a picnic and play some softball and grill some hamburgers and hot dogs. And uh, we'll let you know details about that closer to the time. Aren't you thankful for a church family that we get to be a part of? Amen. We encourage you to, to buy in and be a part and show up at some of these things, and you'll be blessed because of it. Any other announcements to be made? God bless you. You're dismissed.